This video demonstrates the setup and status features of the web UI built into the MPIC series controller. Hi, I am Micah Studeman. The web UI gives you access to many of the critical functions of the controller. It is built into the controller, so no extra software other than a web browser and Java are needed. The web UI allows you to troubleshoot and clear alarms, monitor motion and I.O., perform test moves with the servos, load or backup controller files, and perform controller firmware updates. The web UI is not able to monitor or change the program that is on the controller. For this, you would need to have MotionWorks IEC. Now let's have a look at the web UI in more detail. The web UI page can be opened by selecting a web browser and typing in the controller IP address. I will be using Chrome. The officially supported web browsers are Internet Explorer 11 or higher, Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, and Safari. I am connecting to an MP3300 IEC controller that is on the MP3300 IEC and Sigma 7 demo, which has an IP address of 192.168.15.74. Once connected to the motion controller, the home page will be shown. This page confirms that I am connected to an MP3300 IEC controller running firmware version 3.3.0. It is important to note that any version previous to 3.2.0 has a different look and feel. There are a number of functions available without logging in. I will start with the Alarms menu. The Alarms tab shows the current alarms along with their descriptions that are on both the controller and the connected servo amplifiers. I have an A.710 overload alarm. I'll save the alarm and description, which downloads it to my PC as an HTML file. I'll then reset the alarm with the clear button. It is important to note that only certain alarms can be cleared this way. The alarms history tab shows the current alarms and any previous alarms that have occurred on the controller. This is useful when multiple alarms occur at the same time. I will save the alarm history with the save button. The final tab in the alarms menu is a list of all the alarms and their descriptions that can occur on either the motion controller or the servo amplifier. This can be used to look up alarm codes. Now let's move on to the status menu. The first tab in this menu is the PLC variables tab. This tab displays variables marked as PDD in the IEC program. These variables can only be viewed and not changed in this tab. This way critical application data can be displayed without using MotionWorks IEC. The Debugging tab is here for advanced troubleshooting when working with tech support. The Access Grid tab shows information about the servo amplifiers and motors. This allows all the motor and servo information to be found without looking directly on the motor or the amplifier, which could be hidden or hard to get to. To see more information, you need to log in. The User menu allows language selection and login. The username for all of the motion controllers is admin with a capital A. The password depends on which controller is being connected to. In this case, I am connecting to an MP3300 IEC controller. So the password is MP3300 in all caps. The passwords for the other controllers follow the same format and can be found in the quick reference guide. When logged in, you will see that three menus have been added to the top of the home page. Let's take a look at some of these menus. The Setup menu contains functions used when initially setting up the controller. Let's start with the Archive selection. The Archive function allows the user to either save an archive of the controller or send an archive to a controller. This is useful for commissioning new machines, updating the program of a machine in the field, or replacing the controller. The File Browser function allows files to be manually added to the controller and updated on the controller without changing the code. The Firmware Update function allows the user to update the controller firmware. This is not required or recommended on a controller that is operating in the field. However, the programming engineer will want to get the latest firmware from yaskawa.com slash IECFW during application development. The Configuration Sets function contains three different sections of XML files that define the properties of the connected hardware. The default section is used when the init switch is turned on. This configuration has all of the controller's default settings, 
and these settings are permanently saved to the controller and cannot be removed. The disco configuration is used when the config switch is set on the controller, and when there is no startup configuration. This configuration updates upon reboot to find new hardware that is attached to the controller. The startup configuration is created when the hardware configuration is saved in Motionworks IEC. It is not recommended to view or delete the startup configuration files. The Ethernet config function allows the IP address information and the default gateway information to be changed or modified. In this function, you can also set up an auxiliary IP address. This allows the controller to communicate on two or more networks. For example, the local machine network and the industrial plant network. This screen also shows whether the ENIT switch is turned on and whether DHCP mode is enabled. The controller IP address can be changed by inputting a new IP address, selecting save, and rebooting the controller. The set clock function allows the motion controller's internal clock to be set. Setting this clock allows correct timestamps to be placed on alarms that occur on the controller or servo amplifiers. The clock can be set manually or it can be synchronized with a network time server or NTP server. This will only work if the controller has access to the NTP server. The initialize SRAM function is not used often, but is used when persistent SRAM data invalid alarms occur on the controller. This initialization clears all retained memory, position offsets, and alarm history. The drive parameters function allows the default or user drive parameters stored in the controller to be written to the servo amplifiers. This function can be used when commissioning a new system from a project archive or when replacing servo amplifiers. The reboot function reboots the controller along with the control portions of the connected servo amplifiers. The web UI is also viewable on a mobile device using a browser app like Chrome, Safari, or Internet Explorer. To connect to the web UI using a mobile device, just make sure that the controller is attached to a wireless router that can be seen by the mobile device. This concludes the status and setup features of the web UI overview. Here are some videos that explain some of the topics more in depth. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, yaskawa.com slash IEC for application notes, videos, firmware updates, and more.